Hi, this is Dave Philippi with FabCAD, and in this lesson we're going to take a look at different circle commands that you may not be familiar with. I'll also show you some stretch tips that you may not have used before, and to also explore the new polar array that's available. So to do all that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a medallion and a gate to demonstrate all those different commands. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to our library. And we have in here a collection of driveway gates and walk gates, all different styles, shapes, budgets, okay, all neat little things here. So I'm going to take this one right here and I'm going to insert this one in as a block. I'm going to explode it as it comes in, click OK, and drop it in. So there's my gate. Okay, now. I want to put a medallion in the center of this one gate leaf here. I've got to make sure that I have an odd number of pickets. I'm going to erase these. It says 22 found, which means that there are 11 pickets, which works. So I just hit escape, and I know I'm good to go. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the center one right here. I'm going to turn that red so I can easily find it. And then... I want to be exact where I put my circle because I don't want to have to trim additional pickets. I want to put the circle right to this picket on this side and skip one and go to the picket on this side. Okay? So when I draw my, I want to draw a what's called a two point circle, say from, go to my snaps, say from here and perpendicular to this line here. That way I fit right in between two existing pickets. Save extra hassle that way. Alright, then I'm going to offset this circle, say an inch. Make a one inch two band for this. Then I'm going to trim out I'll just back out and take a look at this. Well, it's a little low. I want to move the circle up. So instead of having to move the circle, trim and extend, I can just use stretch. And just make sure that you get the window through the ends that need to move. If I do, do it from here, it's, it's, it's not going to do any good because what happens then, when I go to stretch, the middle pickets at the top aren't doing that. So when you do the stretch, make sure you cover the ends that need to move. So now I'm going to stretch again. Let's try it again. And let's stretch it up. Say it's about right there. Okay, that looks good. Now, you could use the old classic array and the polar array that's available here, but I want to show you some of the features of the new one. And it's fairly easy to use. Uh, so let's first of all get something to array in there. So I'm going to go up, back up here. I'm going to go to Lawler, and I'm going to bring in actually a snap-on that works pretty good here. So, so I'm going to right-click here, insert as block. I don't want to explode this one, so I'm going to click OK, and bring it in as one piece, and drop it in right there. Now I want to move this up so it's center, so I'll move here from the midpoint here, and then I'm going to pick the quadrant. Here's you know north, east, south, west quadrants of the circle. So north quadrant right there. So that I know I'm dead center when I move it down. So move it down to right there. Okay. Now I'm going to go to the polar array that's here. And I'm going to select the objects. And in the center of the array, I want to pick the center of the circle. See it light up there? Okay, so it's already said 6. Let's see what 7 looks like. So what's nice, the pretty nice thing about this, it's pretty much dynamic. So that's 7. That looks good, so I'm going to close the array. What's cool about this is if I wanted to make a change to this one piece here, I don't have to go back and erase everything else and rearray it. It automatically will update other ones. I'll show you. So I'm going to go in here and click on this. And I'm going to edit the source. You see the array ribbon pops up. I'm going to pick this piece right here. And I'm going to explode this. 
Now watch what happens when I stretch the bottom of this. See that? Is that cool? So I'm going to just bring it right there just for purposes of just showing what it does. All right, and then I'm going to save the changes. You see another array, array button appears over here. I save the changes. Then I draw another circle. This time I'm going to go with a center. I can go with center radius or center diameter. I'm not going to even specify it, so I'll just go with snap to the center. And just let me take the oval, oval snaps off here. It's trying to. Yeah, let's bring it right there. And then let's offset that a half inch. Okay, and now let's see what the inside diameter of that is. Eight and nine sixteenths. Now let's see if we can find a rosette. Uh, it's eight inches, but no, no, it doesn't really go. This is eight and a half. Pretty close. What's this? Fifteen, fourteen. So this is about the closest we're going to get. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this as a block and drop this into the center there and erase this. So there I go. There's my rosette. I have the medallion right where I want it using the two point circle command and I have used the associative array, the, the polar array, so that when I uh, make a change to one, it makes a change to all. And I could click, yeah, obviously, and I could go back and click and say, well, it's really too heavy. Let me drop this back to six. And that's as simple as that to do that. So, neat little way of creating medallions.